the Board of Adjustment meeting is called to order. Uh, the November 19, 2020 uh, board members present are myself, Tom Davis, and welcome, Tom. He's a new member. Uh, Jerry Kaufman is ax absent. Johnny Forker is here. Is Mary Fredrickson on the phone? Or? Okay. And then we have Larry Meads on the uh, Zoom. We also have Kaylee Nunez, George Worley, Bryn Stotler, Tammy is there, and Matt, and Matt's not here, right? Oh, there you are, Matt. These masks, I can't. And council liaison, Councilwoman Billy Orr. I don't think she's in attendance, yeah, but I she can. is. A, we have Kathy Rusing. Oh, hi. Welcome. This is an open public hearing and is being taped, recorded, and videotaped by the city. The proceedings are being televised by the representatives of the public media, the public, local cable, and or radio stations. They may also be rebroadcast. The number of board members present, either via Zoom or on telephone, would be five, but we're still not sure of the one on telephone. Uh, four votes are needed for a majority, and we do have a quorum. As some individuals may be attending via Zoom, all parties wishing to be heard, including board members, are required to state their name prior to speaking in order to ensure proper recordation. <laughs> members of the public are required to state their name and address for the record so that we may know who is speaking and be able to contact them at a later date if necessary. Please keep your phones or PCs on mute unless you are speaking to minimize background noise. The following agenda will be considered by the Board of Adjustments. At this meeting, the, at, at its meeting to be held on November 19, 2020, board members and public may attend in person or through the use of technology device. Notice this meeting is given pursuant, pre, pursuant to Arizona Revised Statute Section 38-43102. And the information for the Zoom is on, uh, I won't read that. Uh, and remember to please identify yourself each time you speak so that we can record your comments in the minutes and properly count motions and votes. Uh, first agenda item would be the approval of the minutes for the last meeting, <coughs> which was the August 20th, <coughs> 2020 meeting. Do you need me to vote on the minutes for, for the purposes of approval? Okay. Second. Oh, we need it first. Pardon? We need somebody to, uh, you, Appro are you proposing approval? Approve the minutes for August 20th, 2020 okay. meeting. I'll second it just because we have any comments or corrections. All in favor, say aye. 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 The first, uh, the second item on the agenda is a variance to Article 3, Section 3.2.3.F, Rural Estate Two-Acre Minimum Setbacks of the Land Development Code, to allow a reduction of the required 35-foot setback by 25 feet to allow for a 10-foot side setback for a new RV carport on a 2.0-acre parcel. It's zoned RE2 acre property owner. Property owner is Bruce and Denise Hebert, and this is sub APN 108-21003G, and the location is 2124 Chickadee, Prescott, Arizona, 86303. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Chairman, members of the board. Tammy DeWitt, Community Planner of the City of Prescott. Here's the site plan that was submitted with the application. This is a request to reduce the site setback so for this property, it is zoned RE, RE2 acre. So that requires a 35 foot front set, setback on the front would be this property line. The sides, which would be these sides. And then on the rear, they could go up to five feet. But as you can see on this property, and I know with the topo, it's hard to see, but there is a kind of, there's a wash that comes through here and there's a wash back here on the property. 
The access is right here. The driveway comes like this onto the property. This is their septic system, and this is their leach field, and this is a reserve leach field here that the square is. So per requirements for a septic system, they do have to maintain a 10 feet separation from any part of their septic system or future possible septic system for any structures. So for this carport to be put in the, any of their in this location, would be, they wouldn't be able to meet that setback requirement. Otherwise, they would have to move it back to the back of the property, um, which you have the wash right here. So access to the north half of the property is very difficult due to there is drainages and their well and their septic field. So, so here's the imagery of the property. Like I said, that here's the access to the property. This is their driveway that comes up. And this is the location of their proposed um, carport. This property is heavily treed, so the, in this location, it is screened pretty well from these residences and from the residents to the south. This is the access, the private, it is a private street to the property, which is shared with other parcels. And this is the driveway down to their property. This is the front half of their property. They do have a well and a uh, water um, tanks on over in this area in front of their house. Then this is their driveway coming into with their access to their garage. This is the wash and kind of the area where their septic system is too in this area approximately. And then this is right here is the property line. So where they're proposing to put the proposed carport is in this area here. Oops, sorry. Which, as you can see, it's pretty well screened from the residences in the back area and then from the property to the south. And this comes right off their driveway. And this is some renderings of what they're proposing for their carport. Um, they are only, accessory structures are only allowed to be a maximum of 20 feet, so it does keep a low profile on the property. Um, staff's uh, suggested motion is to move to approve or deny the variance to reduce the to reduce the 35 foot side yard setback by 25 feet, resulting in a 10 foot side setback for a detached RV carport. And that concludes my presentation. I'm free to answer any questions you have, and the applicant is also here. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, is that you, Larry? Meads. Yes, Larry. I, I have some questions for Tammy. Um, I did find out that its the address is actually Chickadee Creek Trail. Okay. And I was wondering how you determine what is the front or the side of a property. So the front is determined by their access or the road. So let me get back. So for this property, this is the access to the property. So this would be the front of the property because that's where their road comes in. So it's adjacent to the road. So this is their front and then this is their side. Okay. Which either way, it's a 35 foot setback, whether it's their front or their side. Right. Would have no impact here, but I was just curious about that. Yes, the front is always adjacent to their access road. I also had some difficulty reading the dimensions on the, on the page that was provided. Could you review those, please? Dimensions uh, of? Of of the carport itself. Oh, OK. I can't read it either, so let's see if I can. Are the applicants here? Yes, the applicant is here. Do, do they, they should be able to, they could tell us what, you know, they can give us an idea what the dimensions are, I would think. Would you like to come up, please? Uh, Bruce Hebert, uh, property owner, uh, 2124 Chickadee Creek Place is actually the 
uh, official address. Uh, that rendering there, it's, I believe, 16 by 42, which may not actually be the final product. <coughs> that was based on there being a 35-foot setback. Uh, therefore, we couldn't put a wider one in, which is what we want. If we get the variance approved, then we will likely change the design to make it a, a touch wider, of course, going further into the property, maintaining the 10-foot offset from the property line. Okay. George, does that affect this if they change the building after we approve this? As long as they maintain the 10-foot setback, we'll be fine. Okay. All right. Thank you. Did you have anything else since you're up there or that you wanted to? Uh, okay. This is Larry Meads, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Larry. So the 60 foot, 16 by 42, that was the footprint, which is subject to change. That's correct the way I understand it. And what is the height of this overall? It cannot exceed 20 feet in height. Right. I, I couldn't read what what's written there, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, I think it's really hard to read. Yeah, I can't read it the way it printed. But the, the detached accessory structures cannot exceed 20 feet in height. So right now we're just looking at the reduction of that setback. OK, so that's that's not over 20 feet. I just can't no, read not. that dimension, so I wasn't sure. No, it's not. So it's less than 20 it's feet. It's around 17 feet. Yeah, so, so from the, the grade to the highest point cannot exceed 20 feet. This is approximately under, right under 17 feet. Thank you. And if that changes anyway, it'd be a separate issue to the uh, planning and zoning, right? Correct. We'll review it when the building permit that comes in. Right now. Yes. Correct. Okay. So any further questions? Anybody else in the audience, which I don't see a single other soul. Uh, let me make sure there's nobody on Zoom. That, we do have somebody on Zoom that would like to speak. Um, we have uh, Lisa Hitt. Um, you just need to unmute yourself. There you go. Yep, and actually it's going to be my husband, Mike Michael. Hitt. Um, the thing that bothers me is you keep saying there's a wash and they can't build there. The house directly to the south of that in Timber Ridge has moved a wash so they can put in an extra garage. I don't think that's insurmountable for them to figure out someplace else on a two acre lot. Um, and 10 feet seems awfully close to neighboring properties uh, on, the, on the south side. Where there's two, two acres neighbors, it's not a big deal one or the other, but they're moving it to a pretty much a yard, a house with a yard. And it's, I'm not sure that's smart planning from this point. Oh, hold on. Uh, Bruce Hebert again, 2124 yeah, Chickadee okay. Creek. Uh, that's actually not accurate. Moving south is going against a two acre lot, uh, the same area where our home is. Timber Ridge is obviously a development with anywhere from half to three quarter acre lots. And those are all to the east of us, not to the south of us. The lot directly south, which is the direction that we want to move the structure, is a two acre lot. Okay, well, excuse me for being wrong on the direction. I apologize for that. The house then just to the east, okay. uh, if I got that one there, they are building a garage on the front and they have moved that wash that goes by their house well, so they can actually, get the garage in. There. Actually, it's the house, the lot and, just north of that that's doing the garage. That's Eldon and uh, Patty. Correct. Exactly. And you're put moving your garage to the back by those houses, correct? No. It would be 
on this drawing, if you can see it on this picture, north, north is the top of the page. We want to move it south to the bottom of the page. And also for a note of clarity, they can't move the wash. So that would be a, an issue with our flood control. So in place with the septic system, being in the location that it is, that they can't move that wash because it alters their septic system that they have. So the only other place they possibly could would be back here, closer to these residences to the east. That, that would in and be in the, have in the our wash. three neighbors staring at it because we can go five feet off the property line there. We're trying to put it in the best possible place to have the least amount of impact for all of our neighbors. Can, can you go back to that other drawing Lisa. and show again? It's Lisa Head speaking. Which drawing? Um, it sure. looked like an overhead picture with a red. Where, a uh, yeah. So uh, once again, can you, you point where the propose? It's right in there is where they're proposing. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mike, oh. Kip, for clarification, it doesn't impact us on either side. So just take my comments for what they're worth. Thank you, Mr. Hitt. Did you have anything further? Uh, no, sir. I, I don't. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. Yes. This is Larry Meads. Go ahead, Larry. Um, this may be a question for Tammy in 2.59, uh, of the land development code. There's some commentary there about screening, which isn't required, but it's just a this recommendation. Is, this, is a the, this is a detached, this is a detached, this is a detached accessory structure for a residence, but screening is not required and we cannot require something. Oh no, I, I understand that. It's just something that it was just noted there in the commentary, so I realize it's not required, but I didn't know if they were aware of that commentary. Okay, thank you. Anybody else on line or anything, Tam? No, no one else has a hand raised to speak. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Denise Hebert, Crickety Creek. Um, just for the neighbor's clarification, uh -huh. where we have the uh, toy hauler right now, that is kind of being where the carport's going to go. So it's not going to be any further closer to their property. There's kind of a mound back there with trees, okay. if that helps at all. So they, yeah. So right in there, that's where the... Uh, proposed carport's gonna be. And you can see there's a mound of a little hill back there. We're not gonna go any further back than that. Okay, thank you. Well, Mr. Chairman, this is Larry Meads again. I've yes, sir, Larry. Another question maybe for Tammy on this particular drawing. Is there a green line on the ground there? I think, it's a I think that's a reflection that, from the Yes, that's sun. a reflection from the camera. Oh, okay. I didn't know uh, that. This is the property the, line right here. Uh huh. That's where the property lines will be set ten, 10 feet off that into this area. So coincidentally, that line may be parallel with their property line. That image on the on this picture. Could I speak to that or possibly? Uh, <laughs> Pretty close. And I suppose this this uh, RV there is going to be inside that. Carport. Yes, it's an RV carport for that. Physically, for what's going to happen is the RV right now is parked right on the property line. So in essence, on the left side of the RV is where the RV carport will start. And it will just, the RV will actually be parked underneath of it, which is pretty much right in the middle of that Ponderosa. So that RV is parked on the property line and it's about nine feet wide. So. It's, it'll just, in essence, move over. So, yes, this green line is probably about where that 10-foot marker is. Very close to the property, <laughs> to the 10-foot offset. Yes. 
Did you have anything else, Larry? Uh, no, I, and that, and that, using that green line again, is that going to be a, about the long dimension of the carport then? So this is not a line, it's a reflection uh, from when well, I, I take the picture, just... but I, I can't answer that question. So right now, this is the drawing we're looking at that could possibly be about the same length of that, of that carport. Okay, so again, that carport was a drawing that we had a designer do based on the 35 foot setback. Our intent is to build a shorter, wider carport. So it will in fact be shorter than what the one on the drawing shows by approximately 10 feet. Does that help? But this is, the, they're still asking for the 10 foot setback along here. The carport may be a little bit shorter and wider instead, but they still would have to maintain that 10 foot setback and be in this area. Because it'll be part of the site plan. Does that answer your question, Larry? Uh, well enough, I think, yes. Okay. Thank th you. Thank you. Okay, any further comments? Um, Mr. Chairman Tom Davis, um, I have just a question um, for staff. Uh, the finding number six is utilization. Uh, says that um, it will, uh, will deprive the pr property of privileges enjoyed by other properties of the same classification. So um, could you just expand on that? Is, it, is there some finding that the neighbors have a similar type of use or exception? No, this is just particular to this property. It's not, it's just we look at each individual property on its own merits for the hardship it shows that runs with the land. So the, ne the next adjacent property, they also have a 35 foot setback here, but as you can see, there's a wash, I mean, there's a creek that goes through there, so which would impede them. So this, this property here would have the same 35 foot setback. These properties here can put in a detached accessory building up to five feet from the rear, just as they could, but they have smaller parcels and they are hooked up to sewer and water, unlike these properties over here, which have wells and septics. So for this property, part of the issue, the hardship that is on the property, they have this septic system here. We have a septic here, we have a leach field, and we have the reserve field they have to maintain a 10 foot separation from any portion of the septic system. So they cannot be at the end of this leach field, they cannot be any closer to 10 feet. So because of this septic system is why they cannot meet that 35 foot setback in this location. I understand that. I, 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 again, um, I, just, I just wanted to know if there was, there was any other uh, the two acre parcels in that neighborhood or that street were there are there other accessory buildings that encroach into the setback we did not look into that I, I we'd have to do research on that to see if there's variances that have been approved on other parcels otherwise they can encroach into the rear setback up to five feet if there are any they could have been done before annexation, or we have to do research to see if they went through this same process. Your initial question was, do you need to make a specific finding mm -hmm. on that? And you don't, you don't have to go out and start looking to see if there are similar uh, uses in the neighborhood. We look at each property on a case by case basis because they do have criteria they have to meet. It has to be a hardship that runs with the land for that individual property. Other properties may either have other issues or hardships, boulders, outcroppings. In this case, we have a wash that comes back here which limits them to be able to go in that back area back here. And we have a septic system in this location. So the only other reasonable location to put a detached carport would be in this location. I, I'm not, uh, this is Tom Davis again, I, sure. I'm not questioning the location or I'm just curious that if there are other, other conditions like this in that, that area. And we'd have to do research to, to, uh, to see if I there are other property. I don't, I don't know of any that have gone through, so. Thank you. You're welcome.
Okay, if there are, are there any more questions? Mr. Chairman, may I, this is Larry Meads. May I make a motion? You sure may, Larry. I move to approve V820-004 to reduce the side yard setback by 25 feet, resulting in a 10 foot side setback for a detached RV carport. Thank you, Larry. Is, is there a second? Second. Thank you. No other comments? I'll ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 The vote carries 4 0. So we have an approval. And I think. The last item is any staff updates or anything that we need to comment on other than the fact that we have a new member. Yes, we have a new member and we also um, have still have one opening left. So we're waiting to see if that gets filled soon. But otherwise, at this time, we don't have any items for next month, but we will let you know the next week if we get any applications. Otherwise, have a great Christmas and safe Christmas and we'll see you next year. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Mr. I'm Chairman? Yes. It, it looks to me, I can't tell if Mary is present. She may be on the phone. Um, there, there is a, a Mary. Screen. We don't know if it's Mary Fredrickson. And um, I've asked them to unmute, and they haven't been able to. So we're not sure what Mary, and they left. So. <laughs> okay. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. Someone has Just their hand raised. Thank you. So the meeting's adjourned, Kaylee. Yeah. The meeting is adjourned.